Hi, this is Bill the Techno Gypsy coming to you from the Technog Command Post. In this video, I am taking a close look at the Baofeng 888S UHF radio. I'll measure the RF output power and take a look at the transmitted signal quality from this little radio. I'll also compare it against my ICOM ID51A. As you are probably aware, these radios come pre-programmed from China with frequencies that are not allowed for use in the U.S. So, I'll also show you how I've reprogrammed them and give you a tip that will keep you from throwing these things away. You know, like when the radio seems to get stuck in Chinese? At this point, you are probably asking, why am I looking at this cheap radio? Well, I purchased 12 of these radios for my community prepping supplies. During an emergency event, the best thing you can have around your area is a whole lot of eyes and ears. You know, situational awareness. These radios are cheap enough that I can hand them out to my neighbors and don't really care if they get lost or destroyed. Just having a means to talk with other people will help damp down the neighborhood anxiety, especially when people realize their cell phones and internet no longer work. A voice on the other end of a radio can be a lifesaver. I purchased these radios in six packs from Amazon for $64.56. That comes to $10.76 for each radio. Not a bad price for a UHF radio. Each box comes with two radios, batteries, charging stands, and headsets. But the real question is, how well did they perform? So, let's move over to the bench and start testing. The first test I'm going to do is to measure the RF output power of the radio. To do this, I'm using a Bird 6451 watt meter. This meter has a frequency range from 25 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. I've set it on the 5 watt scale for these tests. Remembering that this is a frequency modulated signal, all I have to do is push the PTT to transmit a continuous signal for the measurement. The Baofeng 888S puts out approximately 1.5 to 1.8 watts of RF power. Now, let's see what the RF output power of the ICOM ID51A is. The ICOM ID51A puts out approximately 3.5 watts of RF power on the same frequency. As you can see, the Baofeng 888S puts out about two-thirds of the RF power of the ICOM ID51A. Now, let's take a look at the waveforms on the spectrum analyzer. For these tests, I am using a Tektronix RSA306 real-time spectrum analyzer. For this test, I connected the antenna output of the Baofeng 888S to a 50-ohm dummy load. This is to keep from overloading the input to the spectrum analyzer. The Tektronix RSA306 is configured to display the spectrum in the lower right corner, the DPX spectrum along with the waterfall in the upper right corner, the occupied bandwidth in the lower left corner, and the FM analysis in the upper left corner. The Baofeng 888S is set on channel 3. The center frequency on the spectrum analyzer is set at 462.6125 MHz. The received bandwidth is set at 100 kHz, the span to 10 MHz, and the resolution bandwidth to 50 kHz. 
Keep in mind that the Tektronix RSA306 has a real-time bandwidth of 40 MHz. The spectrum display shows the signal at 462.6125 MHz when holding down the PTT button. The DPX spectrum display also shows the signal, but you can also see two small side lobes in both the waterfall and DPX spectrum. Side lobes in general are not a good thing on FM signals, but these are not bad and the signal does not seem to have any harmonics. The occupied bandwidth of the signal is around 7 MHz. The FM frequency error hovers around zero. Now, let's take a look at the RF signal output from the ICOM ID51A using the same test setup. The spectrum display again shows the signal at 462.6125 MHz when holding down the PTT button. The DPX spectrum and waterfall display also show the signal. You can see that this is a cleaner signal than the Baofeng, as is expected from an ICOM radio. The occupied bandwidth of the signal is solid at 7.63 MHz. The FM frequency error has almost no ripple in it around the zero level. From this testing, it can be seen that both radios perform as expected. Keep in mind that the ICOM ID51A retails for around $485 versus the $10 cost of the Baofeng 888S. Yes, you do get what you pay for, but each radio is for a different purpose. I really don't want to be handing out ICOM ID51As to all my neighbors, and I don't really want to carry a Baofeng 888S in my go bag. Now, let's get into the reprogramming of the Baofeng 888S frequencies. Since a radio only has room for 16 entries, this makes programming a much simpler task. You can use either Chirp or commercial radio programming software. I happen to have standardized on the RT Systems line of products for all of my radios. Before programming the radio, let's take a closer look at the frequencies I have selected. The first seven channels correspond to the Family Radio Service, or FRS, GMRS frequencies. Under the new 2017 FCC rules, you are limited to 2 watts of power on these channels. Therefore, you will not need a license. If you want to also program these frequencies into your 50 watt mobile, you will need a FCC GMRS license. The license costs $75, requires no test, and is good for five years. The selection of these frequencies allows you to interoperate with people in your neighborhood who have FRS radios purchased from a store such as Costco, Walmart, or many others. Frequencies 8 through 15 correspond to the Dot and Star business band channels. The reason I selected these is that they can be found in use by many smaller businesses all across the country. Again, interoperability. Now that I have gone over the frequencies I intend to program into the Baofeng 888S radio, let's jump into how to actually do it. To program the radio, plug the USB dongle into the computer. Plug the other end of the cable into the Baofeng 888S radio port. Open the software and load the configuration file and settings. Then select, under Communications, Send Data to Radio. Turn the radio on and click OK to start transferring the data to the radio. That's it! Your Baofeng 888S is now programmed and ready for use in the event of an actual emergency. Now that we have the radios programmed for use, all may not be as we intended. One of the problems that seems to show up in programming these radios is that they switch to Chinese instead of English. This tip might keep you from getting frustrated and throwing these radios in the trash. When I first encountered this problem, I repeatedly tried changing the setting in the programming software back to English, but it would not go back to English. 
I finally found the sequence you must use to manually change the language. First, turn the radio on. Turn the channel selector to channel 15. Turn the radio off. Press and hold both the top orange button and the PTT button. Then turn the radio back on. After this, it will remain in English. I hope you have enjoyed this video and will subscribe to my channel. Also, check out my page at Patreon at Patreon slash Technog if you would like to help support my channel. This is Bill the Technogypsy saying 7-3 and God bless.